On behalf of Lieber, uh, may I welcome you all to London? It's quite difficult to do literally, right? But if you were to get two and a half zettabytes and burn it onto uh, DVD ROMs, take them out of their cases and just put the discs on the floor and start stacking them up, the stack of DVDs goes from the surface of the Earth all the way to the moon and then it turns around and it comes halfway back. You have all heard, and just a minute ago we heard about the amount of data that's out there. One of the uh, ways I like to think about how much data was created in, in 2012 is if you took every word ever spoken, everything ever written, every thought ever conceived, and multiplied it by seven. That's how much data was created in 2012. I think it's very important to bring all these different people here uh, in London today. We, ha we have seen people from different uh, disciplines, from different areas, from business, from research, from librarians, policymakers. I think it's important to give a voice to all these uh, persons to try to get a clear solution about how it's possible to get a full access to any content on the internet. So my point is that if you look at uh restricting the, the right to do text data mining or to have you know, your robots out there analyzing is virtually impossible. I don't see how anyone can actually draw a borderline between being able to read and being able to analyze anything. Even more ridiculous to a sense is I think trying to, to differentiate the rights between humans and machines for, for doing this. There is no, no way we are ever able to actually know whether it's a human or a machine sitting there doing the reading and, and the analyzing. So you know, I felt a bit like Isaac Asimov here that you know, we need the same rights for the robots as we have for the human readers here. When you see something in our journal it's gone through a particular process, it's got a particular level of assessment that it's gone through, that it's got that brand on it, let's be blunt, and that you can associate a certain level of trust with that branding. It's also no longer really about distribution. In the old world, publishing was about identifying where you were going to pack up a set of boxes of paper things and where you were going to send them to. Today it's about dissemination. I think that text and data mining is in the uh, centre of all of it. It's a crucial thing to do for the European Commission and for the European Parliament uh, when it comes to changes in copyright. Uh, here, I, here, being here, I hear very interesting and uh, controversial so, uh, things, which is very inspiring, uh, among others, that text and data mining is not copyrightable, should be not copyrightable and subject to copyright at all, which is a very refreshing concept to hear, uh, instead of hearing from publishers that it's all subject to licenses. We have now to deal with 20 million or more uh, citations, relevant documents that can help us to, to do the research. At the same time, this is just one example of a molecular database, um, a DNA sequence database, GeneBank. This is the growth of the content in nucleotide or base pairs. We are talking about billions of uh, nucleotide, 160 billion. And so we have to make sense of that using that. Something like that. So it's impossible for one mind. We need the computers, of course. People say um, the right to read is the right to mine. I'll give you another sound bite, which is text mining saves lives. So fundraising, um, it was made more complex in that we had to have more of a discussion. Uh, but there are uh, other considerations that are a bit more complex anyway uh, with regards to where it is you're based. Um, so it wasn't the biggest concern for us, um, simply because things are up in the air and our investors somewhat assume that um, people will be somewhat sensible about it and they, are also, they also know that if things become difficult then we will relocate. I'm here because uh, uh, open data is tremendously important for, uh, for this field, for the uh, technology of text mining and data mining to advance. It is essential that we have uh, data at our fingertips. As someone coming from science policy, we do advocate evidence-based policy making. And so if you can provide examples of where text and data mining has really made a difference and how it could be upscaled, then that. You'll, you'll end up with an, an argument which is irrefutable. 
and copyright issues keep popping up. So now I'd like to, to just separate a bit between copyright and the sui generis database right, because this hasn't been mentioned uh, today, but I, in my humble opinion, I think that we should not underestimate the database right. Pretty much every digital process now involves reprodu reproduction and or communication of the work. So text and data mining can take up to two digital copies made at different points in the text and data mining itself as part of the extraction of data and the making of that copy will be an infringement of copyright unless we have an exception for text and data mining. Thank you for uh, organizing that and thank you for uh, such an interesting set of uh, speakers and uh, an exchange of ideas.